Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Rhonda. Hey, we're excited to be with you today. We want to talk with you about how to deal with negative thoughts that come up. What do we do with them? Where do they come Knowing from? Knowing where those negative thoughts originate, they many times can come from unresolved issues, things that we haven't dealt things with. from our past where we are trained to interpret or define situations a certain way. But that's not always accurate. Sometimes there's just differences that we are misinterpreting. Mm -hmm. You know, we are male and female. They're not the same. And mm -hmm. so we are, you know, different in the way we approach and look at things. Right. We also have unmet needs and expectations. Mm -hmm. Those shape the way we experience what's going on around us. So, of course, um, there can be lusts or selfishness, uncontrolled desires, and just sin in our lives that is making us have a self-focus. Where do wars they... and fightings come from you? He said they come from lusts in your members. That's James 4. Another thing in Revelation 12, 10, it says, uh, talks about the accuser of the brethren. Yeah. The devil is out there to accuse. Thoughts that come from him are going to put down another person. It can be um, spiritual influences around us that, you know, maybe there's open doors that, that we have in our life from the input from media and various sources that are people that we hang around with, right. uh, that we associate with. Is it aligning with God? Am I supported to think the way God would think? But when we think about these negative thoughts, what is the purpose? Where is it going? Why would the enemy do that? Well, obviously we know in John 10, 10, he said the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, to create strongholds. Yeah. The enemy wants a place in our hearts where he can shoot at us using our own thoughts. It sounds like me. But it isn't me, and we have to discern the difference. You know, we need to know um, <clears throat> the effect that that's going to have on us. If we don't deal with those thoughts, in Proverbs mm -hmm. 23, 7, he says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So those thoughts that we allow to stay in our mind, and we just kind of um, rehash them, and we keep thinking them, we don't cast those thoughts down, we actually then begin, begin to uh, carry out those thoughts. Yeah, and, and in Matthew twelve thirty four, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Can you imagine that what's coming out of my mouth, I've already been thinking on. It's been mm -hmm. building, and now it's just flowing out yeah. because there's so much of it in there. Why is the enemy wanting to uh, give me negative thoughts so that they will come out of my mouth? Once they come out of my mouth, they begin to affect my world, my relationships. And it can set the world <laughs> on fire, right? It can set your world on fire, your family, your spouse, your relationship. And we see this in James chapter 3 and verse 6 where he says, The tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members. It defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it's set on fire of hell. Because he's wanting to do damage. You know, in uh, Matthew 15, verses 11, and then 18 through 20, it says, Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. And they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. So they start in the heart and they defile there, which is why it's so important for us to be aware. What is our self-talk? What's going on inside? And this is causing um, issues or problems in the relationship. This is why if we're sinning on a heart level, we have to put it in check there. What is the fruit of unchecked negative thoughts? You know, things that we accept as truth. Um, in 1 Corinthians 13, 6, he says that love does not rejoice <clears throat> in iniquity, but it rejoices in the truth. Are we really believing the truth? Are we just accepting as truth something that I assume my spouse thinks? Maybe it feels a certain way. Maybe it appears <laughs> a certain way. But Jesus said, um, don't judge according to appearance. Judge righteous judgment. It's not always the way it looks. It's not always the way it feels. Our feelings aren't always 
truth. And, and it would behoove us to find out what is the truth because we don't want to embrace a lie. You know, we need to make sure that what we're believing is the truth. Um, also says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love believes all things. So we need to be quick to believe the best about our spouse, to believe that our spouse is good intentioned and that we are believing the truth. You know, it says to abstain from the appearance of evil. That would be a great idea in our relationships to stay away from things that don't look good. But, you know, as we start thinking on these things, it changes the way we believe. It changes the way we see and hear other people. And uh, it says in 2 Corinthians 2, 10 through 11, they didn't receive a love of the truth and they ended up believing a lie. And I believe this can happen in our relationships as well. You know, it can cause division. <clears throat> it can bring damage to the relationship when we're believing something that's not true about our spouse. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, he says, <laughs> Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought, to the obedience of Christ. We need to bring our thoughts into alignment with what God says in His Word. You know, He says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to mm. do this. Yeah. Now, God's weapons, the sword of the Spirit, is the Word of God. He's given us His Word as a weapon. And we should be evaluating, is this what God says, though? Or is this more what the accuser of the brethren says? And so, in Philippians 4, 8, we're told what we ought to be thinking on. Um, whatever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of a good report, whatever is excellent, worthy of praise, think on these things. I love the way that Jesus <clears throat> dealt with temptation in the wilderness. Every time that the devil brought a temptation to him, his response back was, it is written. So he was dealing with evil thoughts because he was tempted in all points like we are, and we're tempted in our thoughts. So he was tempted in thought, and then he dealt with it by saying, it is written. He was casting down imaginations. He was dealing with those thoughts with God's Word. 